Well, you can, uh, if you got my uh, PowerPoint there, we can put it up. I'm going to probably shorten it a little bit for all these introductions, but Tal Haroni, Okay, as we were praying about, um, for the message today, uh, our dear sister Tal was just sensing from the Lord, something from the Lord about the timing of this message and, and who we are. And so I want her to present that and pray for me and for the message here. I just want to say that uh, you've come at a critical time because even in this month right now, it's the Jewish month in the religious terms of the months of Slichot, of, of Elul, in which the religious Jews are thinking a lot about forgiveness and repentance and whatever that means to them. On the one hand, on the other hand, we are facing an election in, an, in a, just about another week. And one of the things I really want to do is ask you to pray for this because the country is so confused. I mean, to tell you the truth is we as believers, we don't even know who to vote to. That's part of the message. I want you to hear this. We don't know because what I want to say, there is no political solution for our nation. There is no religious solution for a nation. It's kind of a trap from God. You know, we always think we're the chosen people. We can do everything ourselves, but, but we can't. And we're in this big, and, and we've solved the big problems. I mean, we're really not in, in physical danger of getting destroyed right now. We got the country has money right now. We have an army with everything, but we're a mess. And there's something else that we need. And that's why I want to talk about that today. And we come into this situation, and the country doesn't even know, even to this day, nobody in the country knows who to vote for. And even if they do vote for somebody, they don't know how to form the government. They're looking at the figures, and there's no way to form a government. It's crazy. And uh, I think the Lord's trying to say, look, I'm trying to get your attention, people. It's not just politics. It's not religion. It's something else. It's a spiritual issue on our heart. And so, Tom, I just share what's in your heart and then pray. Yeah, I just, when we prayed before the message, I just saw that God appointed this time right now. Because God knows every hour, you know, he can step into every season, to every hour, to every moment. And I do believe that this evening can be just a moment that just passed by. And we just say, okay, it was a good meeting. Let's go to sleep. I wonder what we're going to eat in the morning. And you probably, a lot of you probably tired and exhausted. But I just saw the Lord is, is taking, it's like a wave. And we can surf on the wave or we can just wait for another one. And I just want to encourage you today, and I'll pray it right now. But I just want to encourage you today to grab hold of what the Lord has today. To grab hold and just surf on this wave and get to the next point of what God has today. Because it is an appointed time that the Lord established and he has something to shift and change in your personal life and also in this country, in your countries that you're coming from. So, Lord, we just submit this time right now. We just thank you, Lord, that you are a sovereign Lord and you are above everything. We ask that you would open our ears, our hearts, our eyes to see all that you want to show us today. God, that this message will, will do something in our heart that is stronger than just words, that is deeper. And Lord, I just pray for Asher that as he speaks, that you would fill his mouth with your, with your words, that he would be able to release the Holy Spirit, that you would give him the wisdom and discernment how to really uh, portray and, and to really uh, bring out your message. And we thank you, Lord, for this appointed time in history. May it be an historical time in our own personal life and in this, this land's life. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen. Okay, the name of this message is uh, Throwing the First Stone. It's interesting that the phrase to throw the first stone is found both in the Torah of Moses and in the Gospel of John. And this little phrase is actually well-known in the Jewish world and well-known in the Christian world. 
and the two may not know that there's a connection between the two of them. So I just want to show what the connection is between the two of them. Uh, and therefore, it is a comparison between the laws of justice in Deuteronomy and Yeshua's dealing with the woman who was caught in adultery. So the first quote is from Deuteronomy 16. And this is from this past week's Torah portion, which is read in each of the synagogues. As a matter of fact, one of the leaders of one of the political parties, uh, a woman named Ayelet Shaked, she quoted from this this week in her campaign promise. Amazingly enough. You didn't hear that? Incredible. So, um, and it says this, Shoftim v'shotrim titen lacha b'chol sh'arecha asher Adonai Elohecha noten lacha l'shvatecha v'shavtu et ha'am mishpat tzedek. And it says, and you will set judges and officers in all of your gates that the Lord has given you in all of your tribes, and you will judge the people with righteous judgment. And that's the first thing to see is that righteous judgment is part of the plan of God. We don't just have a spiritual philosophy. It has to come down to moral Moral values and social justice is part of what we believe in. So, and so we have to bring righteous judgment. And he says, And it says, And you will not tilt justice. You will not pervert justice. And you will not recognize people's faces. In other words, you will not show favoritism. Nor... Will you take bribes? For a bribe will blind the eyes of the wise and it will pervert the words of the righteous. Tzedek tzedek tirdof, leman tichyu, veyarashte et ha'aretz asher Adonai Elohecha noten lacha. But righteousness, righteousness, you will pursue in order that you might live and that you might take possession of this land which the Lord God has given you. Now, the next quote I think I'm going to skip over just to save some time. I'll quote it for you. It says, and this is saying in Deuteronomy 17, it's saying that if someone commits a crime, uh, either a, an abomination of idolatry or sexual immorality, that the person must be stoned. And, the, and that the person who is the witness to what must be the first person to throw the stone. So when Yeshua said that, he was quoting Deuteronomy. That's found three times in the Torah, in Deuteronomy, and in, and in uh, Vayikra, and in Leviticus. So, but I want us to think about this for a minute. It said there that we need to appoint judges and appoint uh, shotrim, which is the same word as police in Hebrew. So we are people that are basically for a judicial system. You need to be praying for your judicial system in whatever country you're in. You need to be praying for your policemen. That's part of God's plan, to preserve righteousness. It also means, don't worry right now whether you have to stone somebody or not, but we do mean that criminals should be punished. You can't just let people go. There has to be courts, police, and people need to be punished. And it also says that we have to pursue righteousness. I want to tell you that righteousness, if we are passive, will not come to pass. Righteousness doesn't happen. Righteousness is something that has to be pursued. Just as my daughter Jackie shared in, this, in the horrible situation of the sex trade in Israel, we can't just do nothing. We have to do something. We have to pursue it. If we pursue a little bit, God will bless it in a big way. He can multiply it, but we have to do something. It's interesting that it particularly says you have to forbid bribes right there in the Torah because financial corruption is part of the problem. And you can say that you believe, and this is part of our problem here in Israel with the religious. So they say, well, we believe in, in moral values, but there's corruption. There's financial corruption within, within the religious system. So that perverts the eyes. And they think they're being righteous, but they're not being. And then it says, and then it says you have to search each case. Every single case is different. We can't just generalize. You have to check each person. That, so that means there has to be a process. 
Righteousness is in the process. You have to walk out the process. You don't know the end. You can't assume somebody is guilty or assume somebody is innocent before the process. You walk through the process. Part of the justice is walking through the process. I like that, that my uh, friend and your friend, Daniel Jester, wrote a book said, called Due Process. The, pro- the righteousness is, just, is not just in the end, but it's the process you go through to get to that end product. That's so, so that you won't be, um, have a preconceived notion. And lastly, he said that a righteous society allows you to take possession of the land. You see, what we have to have to take possession of this land here is not more religion and not more armies and not more politics and not more money. We need righteousness in this land. That's what allows us to possess this. That's what Zionism should be about in the first place. It's a, we're not having just another country like all the other countries. God doesn't need another country. But this country was supposed to be built on righteous moral values and, and social justice as part of our faith. And that means for every nation that you come. Think if we prayed that. 170 nations around the world praying for moral righteousness and social justice as part of our faith and putting that into your countries. We believe that people of faith with right heart that we need to transform the societies that we live in. And I'm not talking about politics. I'm so much not talking about politics because I said we don't even know how to vote for. How many people on our team here even know who they're going to vote for next week? I don't know. None of us know. We don't even know. We can't. I mean, on the way that we're going to be praying in tongues as we go into the ballot box. Hallelujah. But I just want to say this, that our country is, is in a, a difficult problem. There's a lot of different problems. Uh, of course, we have, we're one nation that lives surrounded by 22 Arab nations, which are part of 49 Muslim nations. This one nation lives in the midst of 49 Muslim nations. Now, we're not anti-Arab. We're pro-Arab, and we're going to bring some of our Arab partners with us tomorrow to also to share with you, because we're all one family together. But... As we look at our nation right now, there is a big clash, and this is why there is no way to form a government right now. It's because there is a clash between the religious and the secular. Now, I mean, when I say religious, I'm not talking about the Christian community in your country. I'm talking about the ultra-Orthodox community here in Israel. That's a little different. And so what we have, on the one hand, we have a, a society a secular society that is sinking into levels and deeper levels of sexual immorality. As I said, the level of pornography coming against our fifth and sixth graders is, is, um, is astonishing. The level, the amount of, of, of pornography and divorce and sex trade and abortion, it's just the, the women are being ripped to shreds in this nation. It's so bad that it's even affecting the men now. It's, it's the, the, what was sex trade before now is going in the abuse, is even going into men in, in, a, in homosexual abuse. Yeah. It's so deep, that, and the country is so confused, they, they can't even figure out what's right and what's wrong here. Yeah. On the other hand, you have a, a religious establishment that is claiming that they are right and saying all the right words. It's amazing. They say a lot of the things that we would say. And yet, within that community... They are stealing money from the government, and they're not sending their children in to go in to serve in the army, expecting the secular people to serve in the army in place of them. Well, that means you're murdering them. If you send somebody else to die in your place, you're stealing money, you're murdering, you're lying about what the truth is in the Bible. What are you doing? So this is not, so there's unrighteousness on both sides, and our people are so confused. We're living in the middle of that. Now, you need to hear this message, and this is why I asked Tal to come up, because there's, this is, I don't know if can, you hear this, it's on different levels. We're talking about Israeli society. We're talking about the Israeli people as individuals that are lost. They can't figure out how to get out of this maze. We're talking about your country. And we're also talking about you personally. And we're talking about me personally. And what's the answer to all of this? Our people are stuck right now. There is no answer. We don't know what to do. We just had an election. We had an election. They couldn't form an ele- a government. So we're having another election. And it'll be the same results. We're just stuck. We don't know what to do. Well, there's an answer. The answer is a person. Let's look now in John 8. This is what I want to describe. And the whole, this, this story of Yeshua talking to this woman caught in adultery, in some ways, 
summarizes almost everything going on in the world right now. Do you know what I mean? It's like, the, what is our message as believers? When we, what is, how can we talk to people when every single television show, everything in the entertainment, is all, it's all adultery? What do you mean? A woman caught in adultery? This is, this is 90% of Western society. What kind of message do we have? Okay, it's wrong. Okay, amen. But what's our message to that? What's the solution to that? And here, let's look at how Yeshua answered this. It's amazing to think about this on all these levels. So, uh, of course, it's a well-known passage, but I want us to look at it again. I'll read it in Hebrew, as always, and translate. John 8, verse 3 to 6. And it says, and then the scribes and the Pharisees brought to him a woman who was caught in adultery, and they set her in the middle before him. And they said to him, Rabbi, and they said to him, Rabbi, this woman has been caught in the act of adultery, right? In the act itself. An amazing thing to say. Moses commanded in the Torah that these type of women need to be stoned. What do you have to say? And they said this in order to test him, to trap him, so they would trick him to have something to accuse him. Now, do you understand the situation? You have people that come up, the religious leaders of that day saying, okay, Yeshua, we brought, we're bringing you this woman who's obviously repentant. She's on her knees. She's crying. And he says she was caught in the act of adultery. And the Torah says to stone her. This is a trap for him. Because if he says she's wrong, we need to stone her, then he's lacking compassion. If he doesn't say to stone her, then he's not abiding by the Torah. Do you see how he's trip, tracked there? You know, we feel the same way. You know, what do we have to say? Are we for the religious or are we for the secular? <laughs> How do you answer that question? I don't know. Now, listen, the whole thing is false in the first place. Uh, tell me something. Can you catch a woman in the act of adultery by herself? That's a good one. <laughs> Something's not fitting in this story. And as we're asking the question, are these people really looking for justice? Or are they looking to fulfill a religious image that they have? Think about that. See what I'm, I'm talking about today's society? This is going on right now. Are we really looking for justice? Or are we looking just to blame someone? And then, if you go back to the Torah, it's amazing. The words actually say, and that you will stone the man and also the woman. It's the man who has the primary responsibility there. It's the man who has the primary guilt, and he's the first one that has to be stoned. Not only, I'll slow down, not only is it the woman without the man, it's the man first that has to be stoned. Where was he? Was he in the crowd? Probably was. I don't know. That was, maybe, I don't know. But you see, it, we're, it, we're stuck in this situation. And uh, we look at that, and we, we, we're sitting here as believers in the land of Israel, and we hear the Orthodox Jews saying to the seculars, you're in sin, this is an abomination. And we go, well, yeah, we agree. But you're not offering an answer to this. What's the answer to this situation? How do we treat people? How are we looking to treat? How do we speak to our religious friends, and how do we speak to our secular friends? This is a real issue for us today in the land of Israel. And he gives us an example. Let's go on. Next one. Verse, going on the same thing, verses 6 through 9, where it's still in John chapter 8. And Yeshua knelt down and wrote with his finger upon the ground. When they continued to ask him, when they continued to ask him, he stood up and said, He says, Who among you is without sin, let him be the first one to th throw the stone. Now he's adding something here. The first one to throw the stone is in the Torah. But he's adding here something, and he's saying, Who, which one of you is without sin? Now that's actually what was meant back in the Torah, because Moses said, pursue righteousness. It wasn't about finding people to stone, it was about finding righteousness. And so the questions, we have to ask the questions. The religious people, the secular people, us, you, me. The issue is not 
who to blame, but the issue is, are we being righteous? Check your heart first. This is not about blaming something else, someone else. This is about becoming righteous. And that's our issue. Just because you're secular or you're religious doesn't mean you're righteous. And our people are sinking this. As I said, the seculars, the two big words there are freedom and love. We want love and we want freedom. But if you have that without righteous values, you put love and freedom together without righteous values, and that equals love and freedom with no righteousness equals sexual immorality, period. Period. That's all they have. And on the other side, the religious, well, we want righteous, and all you come up, you're just condemning everybody. And you're being phonies because you're not doing it right yourself. We need to wake up. We say, wait a minute, we say, we need to say to our, our religious friends, wait, the righteousness is in your heart. Don't point to the secular people and tell they're right or wrong. Just because you kiss a mezuzah and separate uh, meat and milk, that doesn't make you a righteous person. Let's deal with your heart. It's easy to laugh at them. I'm talking about you. Okay. <laughs> Yeshua knelt down and wrote on the ground as a sign to say, just to remind us, a little hint, read my book, Who Ate Lunch with Abraham, that it was Yeshua who wrote the Ten Commandments. Let's go on now, John chapter 8. Let's see how he finishes this up. Verses 10 through 12. This is so beautiful. And here's the whole message right here. The next five minutes and that's it. He's the kef Yeshua va'amarla. Yeshua stood up and said to her, Isha efohem, ha'im lo hirshion otach ish? Yeshua stood up and said to her, Woman, where are they? As everybody began to walk away. I guess I forgot to read that. Everyone walked away and said, oh, Where are those who are accusing you? And she answered and said, No one is, Lord. And he said to her, He said, I also am not condemning you. But go your way and don't sin anymore. What an amazing thing to say. That we can speak to people and say, look, we love you. If you're doing something wrong, stop it. Because we love you. It's not an issue of condemnation. It's an issue of love to help people where they're at. If people are smoking cigarettes, we tell them to stop because we don't want them to get lung cancer. If they're taking drugs, we want them to stop because we don't want them to destroy their mind. And when women are being convinced to do things and even convinced to do that they want to do it and they're destroying their bodies or getting their bodies destroyed for them, we love you. Stop it. Don't do it. Yeshua hosif l'dabar eleyem v'amar, ani or haolam. Isha olech acharai lo yitalech b'choshech ila or achayim yielo. And Yeshua continued and said to her, I am the light of the world. No one can come after me and walk in darkness, but the light of life will be in him. And I want to tell you, it doesn't matter if it's politically right or left. It doesn't matter if it's religious or secular. We have to have a change of heart. Nobody does. And there is no one that can change our heart other than Yeshua. He is the light of the world. And if not, there's darkness in there. It can be religious darkness or it can be secular darkness. It can be condemnation or it can be condemning yourself. Look what he's saying. Now let's, let's hear this. Now don't think about somebody else right now. Think about you. Let's bring it home a little bit. You know. Have you been involved in sexual sin? Not all sexual sin is physical. Huh? Sexual sin is video, pornography. Have you been involved in something? He said, Jesus is saying, look, I'm not condemning you. It's hurting you. Don't do it anymore. Come on, get out of it. Don't feel condemned. Don't get stuck in this. This is what a lot of people do, and this is what happens to a lot of women in the sex career. They get stuck in this loop. Well, I'm no good. I've already blown it. I'm a piece of trash, so I might as well just go back to it again. And Jesus says, no, no, that's not who you are. You're my son. You're my daughter. Here, let me help you out of here. Let, let me give you life and light into your life. Let me help you out of here. You're not a piece of trash. Don't condemn yourself, and don't let anybody else condemn you. I'm not, he said, I'm not here for condemnation. God is not here for condemnation. 
And we are not here for condemnation. We are here to help people and to give them hope. Just to tell people that they're sinning and don't give them a way to get out of sin isn't doing them any good. But he said, now here's the trick. He's not condoning sin. He's not condemning it. Condoning is saying, well, you know, I understand. You know, just go on. It's just the way it is. No, no, he's not saying that. He's saying, I don't condemn you and I don't condone it. I love you and I want to help you get out of this. There's a way out and I can help you. And that's why people like you and people like my daughter and others are reaching out to people and saying, look, we want to help you out of this. It's not, we're not here to condemn you. We want to give you a way out because we love you and we care. There's, no, there's not an ounce of condemnation in our voice and in our hearts, but we're saying stop doing what's destroying your life and destroying those around you. Don't do it anymore. Come on. We've got a solution for you. But you've got to have a solution for someone. Just to tell them not to do it is not the way to come out. And Yeshua said, I have the light. I have the power. I have the righteousness. I have the spirit. I have the way to give you the positive energy, as our young people say, to get out of this situation. And then he said to the religious people, he said, why are you just condemning people all the time? Why do you want to throw stones? Okay, our people don't throw stones physically. Not yet. It may happen. So are you just condemning people all the time? They're no good. They're no good. They're no good. Uh, is that just our religious leaders? No, is it? We all got that little guy with the stone on the inside. And you're looking around. Everybody else. Do you ever feel that tendency? You know what it's... Uh, I, is it, it's not just in me, is it? No, it's in... Uh, it's that little, that little guy in there that's got the stone that's looking at everyone around you. He's no good. He's no good. He's no good. I'm better than everybody else. I'm righteous. Everybody else is wrong. No, that's just... You think that's faith? That's just complaining. That's just condemnation. Hey, guys, cut it out. Cut it out right now in your life. Got any husbands and wives turn to one another and say, no, no. Uh, if you, uh, it's just, uh, if it's, uh, not everybody. You know, we can, it's easy to see that somebody else is wrong. In our family, I'm always wrong, but that's a different, that's a different family. But, but we can't just, there's something in us as believers. Isn't we have to watch out for that. This is what this example of the religious people, well, we're religious too in that sense. It's almost like the, it's a little embarrassing, isn't it? But the more we're believers, I'm so mature in the faith. I've been walking with the Lord for so long. I know all of the Bible verses that I know what's wrong with everybody. <laughs> and you just live in this world. It's all negative, you know? It's just they're no good, they're no good, and they're no good. And, and she says, yeah, what about you? You know, maybe instead of looking at what's wrong with everybody else, we need to say, hey, what do I need to change? You know, and put the stone down. Drop the stone, folks. Drop the stone and say what's, what we have to have, personal righteousness. And this is where we're stuck. Now, here, I want to bring it to an end here. And this is what we want to say to our people. Let me just summarize that, and then we'll conclude it. Two more minutes here. The gospel of righteousness, first of all, is equal to men and women. No difference. We don't, st we don't condemn women and let the men go free. Come on. It, we don't condemn people. We love people. We're giving them grace. But we don't condone sin. We don't say it's okay. We've got to say sin is wrong. And it's also not self-righteousness. Self-righteousness is just as much a sin as sexual immorality. We've got to cut that out. We don't condone sin. We don't condemn people. And we don't walk in self-righteousness. But we have to have personal change right now. Personal change. And that change only comes through Yeshua. And we walk in that place of the balance of grace and judgment. We walk in that place of perfect righteousness. And Yeshua is the only solution. He is the light. And this is what we want to say in your life, in your nation, in our nation, in our people. There's only one way out of this. We're stuck politically. We're stuck religiously. It's not going to work. And the whole world is that way. Look at what's going on in Hong Kong. Look at what's going on in, in Iran. Look at what's going on in Europe. Look what's going on in, in America, in Britain. Every, there's, we're stuck between. We got the beast on one side and the, and the harlot on the other side. We, either got, we got violence on one side that wants to kill people, and we want to get sexual perversion on the other side. It's not going to work, folks. But we have to have the example of love and light and purity, and that only comes through Yeshua. And I want to pray this for you. 
And I also want you to pray this for our nation. Because our nation, with so much zeal, our nation is so zealous, but we're just crashing into one another. And the answer for our people, like it is for every people, is Yeshua said, I'm the light. I'm the way out of this. The way out of religious condemnation on the one side and the, out, the way out of sexual perversion on the other side and the way out of social corruption. You've got to have your heart changed. Any political system won't work if the people's hearts are corrupt. And any political system will work if people's hearts are right. In any way, it'll work out. In any business, in any religious group, in any, if people's hearts are right, it'll work out. And there's only one person that can change our hearts, and it's Yeshua. Hallelujah. Christy, can I ask you to come up here if you're standing up and just play a bit? Let's stand up. I want to pray for you. And uh, I want our team to be sensitive. If you're sensing something from the Lord, I think uh, I'm going to walk up on the stage here with the microphone. So get ready for that. So if you can um, get ready to switch the camera. Let's have everybody stand up and let me pray for you. Let's just open our hearts right now. Heavenly Father, we stand at this moment of time, in this month of Slichot, asking forgiveness, in this week before the elections in Israel, in this international aglo conference here in Jerusalem, in this relationship between Israeli messianics and Christians from around the world. And Father, we're asking for your light to come in to this nation, to every nation represented here, to every person here, to your friends, your friends, to me, to you. Lord, we ask for this message, the perfect message of Yeshua. It's, it's almost like Yeshua, you, you looked... You talked to that woman, but you were also speaking to several billion people in this last generation. It's not about condemnation. It's not about sexual sin. It's about the light of purity and righteousness. And Father, we pray right now for every one of our hearts. I pray for any one of you right now Maybe you heard this and you didn't even want to admit it. Maybe you've been having a problem with pornography. Having a problem with some kind of sexual immorality, some kind of sexual perversion. I just want to pray for you right now. And Yeshua said, I'm not condemning you. But get up. Get out of it. Stop doing it. Get on your way. Cut it out right now. Cut it out right now. Get out of it. Turn that thing off on your computer. Get out of it. I'm not condemning you, but come on. And Father, we pray for the nations around us, the media. We watch the, the, what's going on in, in our elementary schools, sinking into what this woman was doing there, sinking into sexual immorality around us. God, we intercede that we could bring these people the solution, the light, the only person that can help them out. Yeshua, we ask to give every person the answer that their hearts can be changed. All of a sudden, I see something right now. I see Yeshua looking at the heart of this woman, and I see him looking at the people surrounding you and, and me and all of the nations around us, young children sinking into guilt and condemnation because they've been watching pornography, young women that have been raped at the, girl, at the age of 12 and 13 and 14, and they hate themselves. And they, and they say, I'm no good. I'm a piece of trash and just sinking into it. Believers, pastors, I hear the Lord saying. Yeshua is looking at pastors like he looked at that woman. He's looking at sixth graders like he looked at that woman. And say, I don't condemn you. You're my child. You're my son. You're my daughter. Come out. And Father, I ask you to give us strength 
to speak not to this, just this woman, but to the billion people around us that are sinking into that in the same way, that we could show them the light and say, we don't condemn you, but we're telling you, stop doing what's wrong. And the way to get out is through Yeshua. He is the only one that can take your hand and lift you up. And we break the power of sin and we break the power of religious condemnation. And Father, we pray for that for right now for every one of us. For those of you right now that are just saying, hmm, well, I don't look at pornography. Yeah, drop the stone. Father, we pray for that part of every one of us. That we are each one of us in our own way. Religious hypocrites. That we condemn other people and we think we're better than everybody else. Father, get that out of us. Jesus, let us hear you look us in the eye and say, are you without sin? And if you're not, why are you criticizing other people all the time? Why are you condemning other people if you're not without sin? Father, we ask you, Yeshua, we're opening our hearts to you right now. We don't want sin and we don't want condemnation. Yeshua, cleanse us out. And though we're praying for the societies around us, I believe this is true for the 170 nations of glow around the world. Every one of them is facing the same thing. The beast on one side and the harlot on the other side. The violence on one side and the immorality on the other. And Father, we pray to stand up as a people of light, a glow, lighthouses in every nation of the world and say it's not sexual immorality, it's not violence, it's Yeshua, the light of the world. Purity and grace and truth and the power to change people's hearts through his death upon the cross, through his resurrection, through the power of the Holy Spirit. And I want to ask every one of you now, we'll continue this tomorrow. Tomorrow I have a, really a revelation of the Lord for you of how you will be lifted up to be seated with heaven, in the heavenlies with Yeshua. We'll be praying prophetically with a greater level of spiritual authority than we've ever seen. But for right now, I want to ask you, I want to ask you for these next, these next 10 days, Pray for the people of Israel. Pray for the people of Israel. Our people are lost. They're lost in religiosity and lost in secularism. They're lost on both sides. They're so confused. Pray for our people. Don't be impressed by our people. Our people need life. Don't kid yourself. They're in that exact same situation right there. It's amazing. That's happening today. For the religious people, for the secular people, pray for our people to come to know the solution, to come to know the light. There is only one way. We who live here know it. You come here on a tour, it looks pretty impressive. If you live here, it looks pretty stupid. It looks hopeless. Pray for our people. I want to ask you to do that. Whatever you, all your prayers are, and I thank you, as I know you've learned that from me and from others. You can pray all those good prayers for, for our people and for Israel. But the number one prayer is pray for our people to know eternal life, to know forgiveness of sins, to be changed on the inside by the light of the only person in the world to give it to them. The greatest human being that ever lived. The greatest Jew that ever lived. The greatest rabbi that ever lived. The greatest Israeli. The greatest Sabra that ever lived. Yeshua, the Messiah, the light of the world, and the light of our people. I'm asking you to pray. Let's end with that prayer. Hallelujah. If any of you have something before I close, run up here real quick. But Father, we just pray right now, Lord, that we can stand in the place of Yeshua and look to our people. And look with a broken heart to our self-righteous, corrupt religious people and say, are you without sin? Where is your heart? 
and to look to our other people that are just steeped in sexual sin. Say, what are you doing? Get out of this. And Father, we pray that we would arise to be a chosen people. A royal priesthood. A holy people. Father, we pray for the people of God to rise. I said last prayer, here's one more. I'm just seeing it right now. That every one of you in every nation, and all of the believers in every nation, they're caught right in Yeshua's situation. You're caught right in that position. Condemnation on the one side and sexual sin on the other side. And we pray. We pray for the people of God to arise to arise over that condemnation and over that sin and we will arise to be the examples of Yeshua in love and in light and in righteousness. Father, we pray for the people of Israel. We pray for the International Ecclesia, the Church of God. We pray for Yeshua to be lifted up as the King of Israel and as the head of the church, the light of the world, the only hope Yeshua said, I am the light of the world. It's like a candle touching people's hearts. Doesn't matter what your philosophy is. Doesn't matter what your religion is. You got darkness in there. And only the light of Yeshua can touch the inside of our hearts and bring light. Father, we're asking you right now to touch the darkness in our hearts and make it light touch the darkness in those in our family in those living around us touch them touch them as a candle touch the darkness in their light in their hearts with the light of Yeshua touch the people around us touch our nation touch Israel touch the secular Israelis touch the religious Jews touch us Lord God let Yeshua you are the light you are the candle touch us in that place of darkness in our hearts and let there be light Yeshua you are the light of the world Hallelujah. Amen.